Hey there, the video you're about to watch has been made possible by KiwiCo. More on them and their products later, but for now, let's get into the demonstration. Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a, a semi-dive into spaceship paneling. Um, back when I was working in the film industry uh, in the 90s and the early aughts, I, my specialty skill, I was very much a generalist as I am now, but I did have a specialized skill, which was uh, what you'd call a hard edged model maker. Um, so ships, architectural models, set extensions, um, as opposed to sculptor, soft materials, uh, amorphous, <laughs> amorphous making. I since have been able to learn some of that and do some of that. But back when I was a model maker, I, this, this was my specialty, hard edge model making. Uh, and in that, uh, you know, we all have grown up building plastic model kits from the store and putting them together. Uh, but there's a special intoxicating loveliness to panelizing a ship from scratch. And I wanna walk you through the sort of rough rudiments of the process uh, because I find it to be uh, a really thrilling process. And once I show you the kind of rough outlines of this, you can go off and panelize whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Seriously, um, what I'm showing you here should allow you to penalize your own ship from scratch, which, like I said, is really, really fun. Um, the be all end all of model shipbuilding for me is the material styrene. Um, styrene is a uh, plastic, it is melted by a monomer. Uh, solvent, the well done number three is the styrene solvent. Um, it sets almost instantaneously under certain circumstances. And uh, when I was a model maker, everything happens with styrene and styrene glue for the most part. Um, and we're gonna be using several types of styrene here. Um, I've got a, this is thick stuff like, yeah, this is one and an eight, this is one eighth inch, 125 thou. Uh, this is 65 thou. This is 40 thou. Uh, and I think that what we're gonna do is I'm going to make a, a rough cut here. I'm gonna make a rough cut in the eighth inch thick styrene. And one of the things I love about styrene is you don't need to cut it all the way through. You can make a scoring mark and, well, I haven't cut quite deep enough there. I was getting ambitious with the eighth inch. Um, Many, many light cuts. You don't wanna try and cut through styrene on the first cut at all. You wanna make sure your X-Acto blade is regularly fresh with styrene like this. Come on, come on. Here, I'm just gonna put it in the vise and snap it. Now we have a kind of a rough wing shape. All right, excellent. Um, I'm trying to see if I have a, all right. I'm just gonna carve off this little, this little end nub in here. There we go. Um, now, I'm not gonna do a ton of um, shaping and finishing to the edge of this, because I'm just gonna show you how I would panelize like a wing shape like this. So, it starts. Uh, you've got your main body. And again, this may be a dimensional wing. It may curl over. All of the same rules I'm about to go through still apply. I'm just using a flat sheet for the ease of demonstration. Um, and the first thing you would do is kind of get an idea about what you want the panelization to look like. So it's good to have a pencil. And I would sit here and just sort of, all right, let me just make a border, give or take. And I'm just using my finger as a slight sort of marking guide, marking gauge, and I'm just drawing an outline here. Okay, so I've got the outline. Now I'd like to, when you're thinking about how these panel lines break down, it's important to come to some kind of logic. In every ship that has panelization, whether it's the Rebel Blockade Runner or the Medical Ship or the Millennium Falcon, there is, as you can tell from looking at it, a kind of a, 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 a philosophy about where that paneling starts. In the Millennium Falcon, it's radial from the center, unless it's the walkway to the cockpit, in which case it's uh, bilateral from the top center. Uh, and the medical ship is, is similar. So 
in the looking at this wing shape, I tend to think that the panelization would kind of go perpendicular to this bottom plane instead of perpendicular to this uh, diagonal plane. So I'm just gonna make a few, a few separations. All right, so I've made some basic separations and now I'm going to start to cut out uh, the pieces that will go here. Um, and none of this requires high levels of precision. And this is a process that you can completely eyeball and it will be fine. Um, so I'm just gonna start that there like that and give this a little bit of a cut. Okay, so there's that goes there. Great, oh uh, yeah, I'll get that in a minute. Then, oh. actually, I need a bigger square so I can cut a nice straight edge at the bottom of this. And again, the thing I love most about styrene is you just score it. Oh. I keep on scoring too lightly. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited about this build and it's making me behave impulsively and impatiently. Ooh, yeah, that moved on me, didn't it? Oh, that's not even square. Wait, okay, that's my straight edge. That's why I screwed it up. Okay. Good, good, good. Boink. Okay, so now I've got this edge piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this whole thing to this size here. So, and that. Wait, is that my straight edge? Yes, it is. Now I'll trim that. And again, I'm just getting these pieces close. The real shaping is gonna happen in a few minutes. I'm just sort of blocking out the major details here. So that. Great. Okay, now the question is, I want to cut the diagonal here. As you can see, I'm not using a ruler for nearly any of this. This is all with just straight edges, squares, and my eyeball. That's how loosey-goosey you can be. Okay, so now I have two major panels and I'm gonna start to ensmallen them and make some adjustments. Um, it all begins, it begins in the boring stage, right? There was just, I'm just like, I'm not trying to make it look really pretty or interesting. I'm just trying to get out several panels. The interestingness will happen momentarily. So, okay, I, I drew a piece there and we can cut that out. And then I drew something actually, so yeah, there's a second panel, great. Now this is a third panel because I've taken a space out and I have this feeling that I might like, yeah, I might like a thinner panel here, like this, and then this one maybe comes up like this and then out to perpendicular to that. Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll panelize that out there. Good, okay, so uh, I'm gonna affect the thin piece here. come out and again 
I'm, there's no ruling. I'm just measuring by eye. I'm just kind of, there's my thin, my thin panel. Here comes this one. And now that that is like that, I'm gonna trim this one down ever so slightly in order to uh, take its dimensions down. Now I'm gonna do this by eye rather than the straight edge because if you lay your blade down really low profile and keep it perched right above your pencil line, you can cut surpassingly straight cuts in styrene without a ruler. It's absolutely doable to make nice, hard, straight cuts in styrene without a ruler. Just, just takes a little bit of slowness and practice. Um, yeah. At ILM, we used to have like little model making contests, like who could use an X-Acto blade to peel the longest shaving off a piece of styrene? <laughs> Lauren Peterson was always really good for those kinds of contests. He loves that stuff. It was really fun. Um, all right. I think those are my panels. Excellent. And yeah, I've got a little bit of an X-Wing thing kind of going on, but I'm not done with these panels just yet. And let's take a look at these uh, separate from the wing shape. There, are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can see what I've done here. I've blocked out the panels. Now I have, let's see here. This is a really important tool for me in the way that I do panelization because it's a notching tool. So uh, it looks like a pair of pliers where this is the business end, but it's not. This is the business end. And what happens when I bring a piece of styrene here is I get a little notch out of it. And this notch is a really important part of the panelization, uh, specifically in the Star Wars universe, but uh, with many other universi. Universes? Universosity. Um, okay. So now we go through and we add some of these little notches. Like there's often a notch out at the end of a panel like, like this. Um, actually, I munged it, so let me clean it up a little bit. There we go. So there's a notch out at the end of a panel. I'm going to do a couple of notches. Uh, yep, I'm going to do a couple of notches along And here we come to a really specific thing about the Star Wars universe is that two things like that is about the most you would do. You would never do like three notches in a row. You might do three notches in a row, but frankly, you don't want too much regularity in the Star Wars universe. So I might add some more panel cutouts to this, to this piece, um, but I'm gonna wait and see. Well, there's one. And now I'm also gonna add a cutout over here. Yeah. And I the notcher gives me straight notches, straight edge notches, but I can use my X-Acto blade to go in and add a 45, or at least just like some kind of relief angle. And then I get that kind of relationship going on right there. And that's very Star Wars-y that right there. So let's add in another couple of notches. And so as I'm doing this, it's a very organic process. I'm sort of looking at the whole thing and I'm thinking, right, there's a pen now. Okay, let me do a couple down here. And these notches, by the way, are for cutting square holes in sheet metal for like making panels and stuff. Uh, you drill a round hole and then use the notcher to square up the hole. They're fantastic tools. There's several different versions. This one by, um, Soft, wait, no, oh, oh, no, no. This one by Adel Tool Company, A-D-E-L, from Chicago, Illinois, is an old one, and I, it's my favorite. And Radio Shack used to sell one. It was not amazing. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna do the corners of this guy here. There and there. Oh, I can see that's really bad, so let me clean that up. So, yeah. The notching process, the, I can't give you a really specific guideline as to how you should do it. It's about like looking at the looking at the piece that you're making. Wow, I'm really messing this one up. 
looking at the piece that you're making and sort of organically following a pattern that ends up looking right to you. It's just that, it's, it's that nebulous, frankly. Um, I'm gonna give a angle to that one. Okay, and then we'll do another angle on this one up here. Excellent. There's that. Good. Uh, I'm going to go in. We're going to add a bunch more little notches there. Some of my notches are going to be straight sided. Some of them are going to be angle sided. Um, that's totally up to you. Star Wars ships encompass both. And if I was really going to do this panelizing uh, on the clock, this would be like, I'd probably give like two hours to this thing. I'm gonna do it here in about 25 minutes. Um, so just know that I'm going actually kind of particularly fast in relation. But yeah, all of a sudden now, I'm starting to really, I'm starting to get a thing and I'm really getting happy with it. The process of sort of looking for where to make the next mark, it's just like wherever you have the strongest point of view about it. Just doing one at a time. And eventually, like, as I do it, it starts to look more and more like a thing I want it to look like. And thus, I know I'm kind of getting close. And you don't have to use a notcher to cut these out. Uh, forever, I use just a styrene uh, X-Acto blade to do that cutting. Okay. Stage one, complete. I've got, I've taken a basic large shape and using my eyeball and just a little ingenuity, I have notched it to make it look more like a, the jury rigged pieces of Star Wars. Excellent. Maybe this goes like that. Yeah, I think that's where it goes. About KiwiCo. KiwiCo makes some great toys and projects designed to introduce kids to the ideas of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And while that may be the dry way to put it, what I see that they do is they teach kids such an invaluable lesson that with a little bit of labor, they can make something from nothing. From a box of parts comes an object. This teaches kids to see themselves as makers. It teaches them engineering and problem solving skills. And I have personally built two of their kits, their ukulele, which was a delight, and their tilt and fold desk right here, which I assembled upside down, but that's on brand. Maybe my single favorite thing about what KiwiCo makes is that they include everything you need for each build in each of the boxes themselves. There's no hunting for a penny or scotch tape or a rubber band. If it's necessary, it is in here. We also have a special offer for tested viewers. If you go to kiwico.com slash tested, you can get 50% off of your first month of any of their subscriptions. All right, let's get back to the video. So now we have this. So you start with this. And I cut this up, did a bunch of work on it. Now I'm going to apply it to here using a brush. So I'm just using a cheap chip brush here and I've got some Weld On 3. Um, oh, let us dispense the Weld On 3 using my favorite technique, which is to use a can of soda. Um, I washed this out earlier so I wouldn't get sugar all over my hands. So you cut the bottom off a soda can and the reason you use a soda can is because it's got this really nice little shell here, this really nice little detent. And so here's what I'll do. I'm gonna put it down to here and I'm going to just glue, add some CA glue around the perimeter of this. Um, what I'm making here is what I call a greebly palette. Um, I don't think I came up with this. Uh, but I can't remember who I first saw using it. Um, and you're gonna see how versatile a tool this ends up being for doing the work that I'm about to do. Um, so I've got my, actually I've got a little bit of water here. Water doesn't really necessarily hurt the equation. It actually helps CA glue to kick, but it's not great for the weld bond. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this Weld bond. Just gonna pour a little in here. Weld bond is highly um, evaporative glue. 
you got to cap it every time you're not using it because it will just go right through and evaporate out. So if I leave this at the bottom of this can here, uh, it'll just disappear in like half an hour, I swear. Um, so we start to apply our pieces to this. And you don't have to be super precious about it. You could just dip your, your, your paintbrush into the weld bond and go around the outer perimeter if you wanted to. Um, it's going to wick in through there. And I just want to point out how quickly this stuff sets. It's already on. I literally just did like that. And now it's actually, you'd be hard pressed to remove it. That's how quickly the weld bond works with nice flat styrene. So then I'm going to continue on this tradition and add in the other pieces of the panelization. And again, I'm just hitting the outside edges. Excellent. And when I get halfway through, I'm going to double check my measurements so that I don't end up being too long or too short. If I need to do some trimming, I can still do that. Um, yeah, there's also a magic trick that happens at the end of this procedure that is really neat. All right, so I'm going to start over here and do this guy. Um, the styrene glue, because of its thinness, has a natural wicking feature that is actually one of the reasons it's used for acrylic gluing, because it wicks into the seam. It's doing the same thing in the styrene. And actually, as I put this piece down, there's just a little bit of weld bond in the way, and I can feel it grabbing and setting <laughs> almost immediately. I'll just run this around the perimeter. Um, if you are inspired to try this technique, I would really love to see what you do with it. So please, by all means, send me your executions using this technique because uh, I love doing this. I have so much fun. And really, there are no rules. You can do it however you want. And I mean, the best way to do it is to try it. Buy some inexpensive styrene from Tap Plastics. I think each of these pieces came from Tap. Like, that's a dollar from Tap Plastics. And I could penalize for ages on that. Um, in general, 40 thou is about the thickest I would choose for panelization. I normally like it sometimes thinner, or I'll work with multiple different thicknesses. But here we are. Now we've got the panels on this piece. There are two more steps to greebling it up. And oh, I can't wait to walk you through them. Okay, um, so I have all these little cutoffs, these little cutouts from the notches. They are all actually useful to me. So I'm going to start to assemble them over here. And I, I'm just gonna end up making some basic greeblies, like there's, there's a trapezoidal greebly. Here's another trapezoidal greebly. There we go. And I've got some little pieces here. That can go. Yeah. I'm only going to grab the ones that are nice and straight. The ones that are a little cattywampus I am not going to bother with. They're all about the same size, so they actually give me some uh, some nice consistency. I'm just moving all these over here because they will all come into play. Uh, and these are just end cuts of what I've been playing with. So that's one of my sources of greeblies is cutoffs from what I've already been doing. Okay. Now you not re re you don't have to be confined to just cutoffs. Um, and I'm about to show you another product that is a key part of my model making procedure, which is Evergreen. Now, Evergreen are, this is Evergreen. You've seen these at the train store. Evergreen are strips of styrene in different uh, dimensions. They're generally all about this long, whatever this length is, give or take uh, about 12 inches. Um, and this one here is, uh, one by uh, 20 thousandths by 250 thousandths. So a quarter inch by the thickness of uh, effectively a paper match. Uh, this one is 40 thousandths by 135 thousandths. So I'm going to pull out one of each of these. Actually, I'm not even going to pull out a whole one. Here's how I use the, the evergreen. I just get a piece sticking out and I grab myself a little piece of it there like that. 
There we go, that's one. And now I've got the sticker stuff. I'll grab a piece of one of these since this is nice and thin. And I'll grab that. Okay, so now I've got the evergreen. Ooh, there's one more tool to show you. There it is. This is the better one. This is the easy cutter um, and it has a more refined center here. And so I can, uh, I can go in and use this to make lots of little greeblies. And the more the merrier, frankly. I'm gonna go with some squares, some squares. Now, normally I would go for like multiple different shape, shapes on something like this, but in the interest of time, I am just gathering these different chunks. So, we have our styrene. We're almost ready to start greebling, but not quite yet. We have one more thing to gather for our greebling. And the greebling is the next stage, and this is the second most fun stage of doing this. The most fun stage of doing this is the painting part, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. We're just doing the physical construction. The next part of the greebling is to add some actual greeblies, and to do those, we're going to find them on these model trees. And I have uh, hundreds of old military kits here with pieces and parts on them, and I'm just gonna go through one. This is a Tamiya Flakbeerling, I believe, one of my favorite parts to get parts from. And I will use my flush cutting Micromark scissors to cut out a few pieces here. Use those. Yeah, we can put those in there. that going. So this is like, I don't even know that I'm going to use all of these, but I go through and I find the ones I find interesting. I clip them out and I end up, just like the pieces of styrene, I end up with a little pile of model parts that I like. Okay, let's go through another treat. <clears throat> uh, that one's not that interesting. Mm, oh, no, nothing good on that one. Sometimes you gotta kiss a lot of frogs. And everyone ends up with their favorite kits that have their favorite greeblies on them. Oh, this is an excellent one. Okay. So trim off a few of these. Oh my God, I can't wait to show you the final magic trick that makes this whole thing sing. It's gonna blow your freaking mind. Sorry to mean to yell, but I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so now we've got our greeblies. I'm gonna separate them out from their mold sprues. And here's what happens. Oh, this is so much fun. This is literally the whole reason this thing exists. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pour a little more styrene into my styrene cup. I'm gonna get a fresh X-Acto blade. Having a fresh one is really important. So, I'm gonna bring my piece here. Now I'm gonna to start to add some of the styrene pieces to this. Um, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to pick up the piece of styrene just by touching it with the X-Acto blade. I'm going to ever so slightly show it to the water and bring it over here. Oh, 
show it to the water. I meant the styrene glue. There we go. I got a little bit wet with styrene glue and put it down. Lift, ooh, ooh, ooh. Small styrene glue, get it down, lift it up, it's in. Now, that is a specific placement for a rectangular greebly as near a notch. Sometimes you, you see some repeated elements of these moving down the side of a wing. I mean, all you have to do is look at any of the old Ertl kits to kind of parse the whole Star Wars, the whole Star Wars greebling vibe. Um, Cause they're all following the original stuff done by Lorne Peterson and Steve Gawley and Grant McCune. And I'm not being precious about the thickness here. Some of these are thicker pieces, some of them are thinner. But I'm starting out with the styrene because it's giving me the kind of, and again, I don't have an overall plan here. I am literally just sort of moving through this and thinking to myself, okay, where does another, where do I need one more piece? Maybe here, maybe there. And so with each of these, I'm just sort of servicing the need that I see in the moment. And again, I love this, the sharp X-Acto blade thing because you just bring it in and then lift and it's done. Now, sometimes two greeblies, two little rectangular panel greeblies go together and then you bring them near each other. Yeah, like that. Um, and now that I like the look of that, I may go and do that elsewhere. I may go do and do two here. Yes. Um, maybe there's one in the middle of a panel, like over here, and that that one has this other one. So when I'm looking at this to see if it's right to me, I'm looking to see if it tells a story, if it feels to me like an industrial piece of equipment, or if it feels like there's a part of it that's too blank, that doesn't make sense to me, or that draws my eye for the wrong reason. Um, you know, if anything sticks out to you, that's probably problematic. You're looking for a kind of a gestalt to this to make it look like this has been cobbled together, you know, stolen from the empire, put together by the rebels. Uh, that's because all the rebel ships tend to be a little more hacked together and the imperial ships tend to be a little more uh, cohesive because, well, they've got better infrastructure. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna keep on going through, looking for the places that I think I need, a, think I need a greebly. I'm actually feeling pretty good about this right now. The super low profile pieces of plastic are awesome. Like the 20, I love the 20 thou as opposed to the 40 thou for these kinds of details. Um, I think I'm gonna do another one right there because that one's too noticeable. Okay. So now I've done a little bit of each of my styrene piles. Now it's time for the model pieces. And these model pieces, yeah, I pick them up the same way with a sharp X-Acto blade, bring it down. And because they're made of the same stuff, they're made of styrene, doop, they just stay where I put them, right? And so then I can actually start to play around with this and do two things together. Right, I do a little bit of styrene, a little bit of a greebly. Here comes another greebly. I'm going to put that ahead of the styrene. And I feel like I need another little greebly right over here to kind of help busy up this area, kind of make it make logical sense. Uh, let's see. Um, these, oh, 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 right. These pieces that look like cylinders, I'm gonna put two of these together somewhere. And where is actually an open question. So where am I gonna, ah, uh, yeah, right there. Yep. Uh, you know, you may not know where it's supposed to go, but if you place it near where you're, if you place it somewhere, that helps you learn where it wants to go. You have to push the thing into a direction to see what direction it wants to go in. It doesn't matter as much it really doesn't matter what direction you're pushing it in, as long as you're pushing it in a direction. That is really the most important part of this sort of creative process is there's no rule book. It's just like, does it feel right? Yeah, those two look good together. They look good together. Now, what is that? Okay, so I've got 
these little chevron pieces and they could go maybe, hmm. let's see. I'm almost finished here. And maybe, does that one live down there? No, I don't think so, but maybe it does. Yeah, that's where it lives, right there. Oh, this is where we're totally in the Bob Ross category. But, and I wanna tell you, like one of the things that Bob was always saying is you can put it wherever you want to. The way I say it is, listen to your point of view. Does it belong there? That's where it belongs. Um, to me, there's an internal logic to everything if you're just paying attention to it. Oh, God, I love doing this. So this was always this is always like the final the final pass on a on a big model. So when I was doing the Topoka City model, where Django uh, and Obi Wan have their fight, the the Topoka City building behind them is a model I built that's only about this big in diameter. So it grows into this tall conning tower. And that conning tower is right behind Obi-Wan and Django when they're fighting. And that's all at this kind of scale. So after doing the vacuum form for the big piece and after doing the vacuum form for the panelization piece and then cutting that into a hundred or so pieces and doing all the panel notching, then I built this easel with like seven different buckets of different pieces of styrene. And I spent like an entire day just walking around this model doing precisely what I'm doing right here just looking for spots that need a little bit of interest, that need a little bit of, of detail breaking to kind of draw your eye and make you feel like you're looking at a piece of Star Wars equipment. All right. Um, oh yeah, these chevron pieces. Oh, well, do I wanna, hmm. You know what? Actually, they may go really nicely here. Like in relation to the wing joint. I am thinking of this like a wing. And, you know, you may not think of it as a wing, but you, it doesn't matter. Like, we're all coming up with our own logic system for these things. Oh, okay. There we have it. This is a beautiful amount of panelization. I'm really, really happy with this. I have to tell you, waking up this part of my brain is deeply pleasurable because I haven't done this in a while. Um, I'm using a lot of different tools because I like to use a lot of different tools. All of this can be done with a straight, all of this can be done with just an X-Acto blade if that's all you had. Um, having a straight edge helps, having a pencil helps, having a square helps, but none of it is absolutely necessary. Um, but there is one final magic trick to do with this and that is you hit it with a little bit of paint and then you're gonna, you're gonna watch this whole thing wake up. It's my favorite transformation. My favorite primer for model making is the Tamiya Surface Primer. I love this stuff. I think it is actually a lacquer. I'm not positive. Oh, it smells good. It smells like a lacquer. Here comes the magic trick. Transforming this from a group of parts to a cohesive thing in three, two, one. There you have it. Um, lest you wonder that this is an industrial light and magic technique, this is a technique that honestly, it, it, this technique is probably already 45, 50 years old. Um, they were using these techniques to do the models for 2001 and a silent running. Uh, it predates George and it predates the crew in Van Nuys working on Star Wars, but it is, it, the, con the contribution of Grant McCune and Joe Johnson, Lauren Peterson, Steve Golly, all the Richard Taylor, all the original ILMers in 
codifying this kind of thing. I feel like I'm tapping right into this like 1976 vibe with these guys. And also all the folks working in England on the Nostromo model for Alien was built exactly using these techniques. Um, it is part of a long lineage of which I am but a tiny cog. However, the pleasure I get from this is so deep. Uh, I exhort you to just buy a model and start trying to do this. Now, if you have contours, that can be more complicated. Um, the way I deal with contours is I'll do a vacuum form for the part that I am making, like the wing, and then I'll do a second vacuum form over that part to do the panels with. That is the standard way to panel a, 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 a piece that has compound curves in it. So you vacuum form it once for the wing, and then you, without removing that vacuum form, vacuum form over that part again, and then when you cut your panels out of that, they fit exactly. That's how we did all the big cities on Topo all the panelization on the big Topoka city buildings. Um, but this flat execution shows the procedure. Now, in painting, it's a totally separate thing. I'll do a video about painting this piece, uh, but this is just about the construction Thank you guys for joining me for this demonstration. I'm Adam Savage in my cave in San Francisco, and uh, I'll see you next time.